some a couple things. I'm gonna have you learn about what cat picks are more important here. All right. Anyone's welcome to join. Game is up right now. Game is up right now if you'd like to. It's welcome for everybody. All are welcome. Is it friends game? Does the noobs join? Anyone can join. Anyone's allowed to join. It's all are welcome. All right, here we go. Get that dab in there. Here we go. All right, because I am one of them. Says the dude who was top 10 in the last rank season. Ugh. All right, well, here we are. I'm gonna teach you guys how to play some uh, Europe Advanced Caps. What cap picks are more important? What ones she, you should be going for on turn one? Right off the bat, I'm gonna start with white. Best decisions for white, do not go top or bottom left. You can't do that if you're looking for a snowball type game because it can obviously move all the way through to Benghazi right here. This is Benghazi with the black two here. Because if he puts his cap here on Rabat, he can get this turn one bonus as long as yellow and green don't add caps behind but they're taking the risks that they do just because they're noobs they could be noobs instead white puts it on greece this could be good this can be bad i'll point out the reasons why it's good and why it's bad um for me um i should be going uh top left can be good for me but i if i want to play the safe game i think treste is the safest play for me I don't really like to go in the in the corners if I'm playing for the late game. Because let's say I'm playing a novice to grand master game. If it's like if there's like mostly novices, yes, I could see where the corner could be good. But if you're playing in a higher uh level game like Master Plus, then you need to be going into the center of the map because the center of the map is where you have the most card block uh points, so you don't get card blocked by all the masters and grandmasters in the late 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 game. So you want to look for something like Treste if you're my player. I'm going to go right here best day. Now, if you're white, white player, this is a good cap. I'd, I'd say it's a very decent cap. Um, for him, I would probably, the best cap for him is definitely going to be uh, Alps or mm, Alps, probably one of the best caps. The only reason, uh, Greece, Greece is like a good evening because of the Gascony Blizzard and the uh sardinia blizzard because it's cutting off so much of the map that this is like good as it is but since i capped next to here it's gonna create issues and now because carter capped in bottom left that is not his best cap i think carter's best cap was gonna be top oh no no because i could just take it turn one if it got if i got a really good roll on him so his cap the reason why carter shouldn't cap on oslo to get these two bonuses is because i have a two next to him and i go before him right you want to be looking for those things number one thing is your position look at what uh, your position is on the right side as you can see i'm second so the only person i have to worry about is white if white's before me i need to make sure i'm not putting my cap next to any of his stacks okay because then he could roll an easy uh, cap roll on my cap, take it. Maybe he gets good enough dice, lucky dice, you know, that can happen. You don't want to take those risks. That's why it matters. So you definitely want to be not capping next to a stack of a person who's in front of you in the turn order. That matters. So, for instance, white has a three down here in the bottom right. Let's say yellow caps on Mecha Bedina. Well, white, white gets six on his first turn regardless, and... Uh, that's a that's obviously a 9v. Oh, you just lost that roll. It's a 9v4 because when you place your cap, you add three troops to the territory and you have to cap space territory. So it's important. And for my situation, I'm probably going to go down here. I could also have a chance at rolling this. That's only around 62, 63%. You don't want to roll caps. I mean, I, I could take that, but let's put it this way. I don't have anything else to fortify to it. So in this situation, if I did take it, green could take it back from me after, or yellow could take it, because yellow's going to get at least eight every time, right? He always gets eight, tro eight troops on his first turn. So he could just yoink it back, because it'll be nine. I would have to not lose, like, maybe, I would have to lose maybe one troop to keep that capital. The likelihood of that's very low. So 
I'm, I'm not going to take that risk. What I'll do is I take a card. I think in this situation, I take a card like this. Just take the bonus. Someone breaks me, they break me. Italy could be a take here, but uh, because of the awkwardness of the twos, it's better not to go for that. It's You're going to have to make some risky rolls just to take it on turn one. And plus, you won't keep your cap strong after that. So it's important that you aren't, you know, leaving your cap weak after the first turn because people could be taking a bonus on turn one and then working upon that, right? You don't want to take that risk. Did you, bro, there ever a cause where you would side cap someone or do it to, or do you just always avoid? You always want to avoid hitting a cap if you can. If there's nothing you can do about hitting it, about avoiding it, and you have to go for the roll, uh, I mean, like, like a certain situation, I would say, oh, Carter just fricked himself. In this situation, Carter has to go back to cap. Is there any chance yellow, yellow and red are not down here, fortunately enough for him. So he might be okay. The red's going to go for the top left. Interesting. He has, see, but this is good for him because he's got a three to fortify over. And the only person that could really get over to him is Mirror Blue, because, I mean, Green's not going to do it. He has to go. He already has a weak cap, so that's really good for Red's position. Smart play. I like it. I think it was a really good smart play for him. Um, If it's kissing caps, you don't have to hit the cap. You don't ever have to hit a cap. Kissing caps are not necessary to hit. Just because the cap is next to you doesn't mean you have to hit it. Of course, there are certain situations like let's say white puts their cap on Rabat and so does green put their cap on Andalusia. Well, first turn white gets six. He's going to hit green. Is it, I think that's pretty an obvious situation where, you know, he's going to hit him and white signaling to me. Hey, let's be good friends and I won't hit you and I won't hit you. Cool. Sounds good to me, right? My cap's already strong. I can do this. This is a bit risky. I'm sure people won't like it. Split. Fortify to cap. They have to open my cap to break at least to Derek. So they'll probably break Alps if anything. Um, going back to cap rolls. Uh, back on that turn when uh, White took their turn, he could have put everything here. Did a six v three. That's very risky. Uh, even three caps are kind of strong. Seven v three is not even going to be eighty percent. It's seventy nine, something like that. So you don't want to go for rolls like that. I think Carter in his situation should be removing White here even though he wants to keep his, his cap strong. Probably should have added two to this and, and three to that. He could do tap, tap, keep his cap strong by fortifying this to here, and this is in front of his cap. He's safe, right? Uh, Carter's situation in the bottom left, green player, I should say, uh, is not really the best place uh, in the late game because what's going to happen to Carter is... Obviously, everyone loves to take the noob corner like Carter is in the bottom left. And everyone likes to take the, the noob corner in the top left like red. Uh, but the thing is with the bottom left is in the late game, how many troops does Carter get when he holds this? He gets an extra 10 plus his cap, which is 2, so it's 12, plus an extra 3 for his troops already. So 15 troops, and you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 territories, maybe 16 territories sometimes. That's an extra two troops, putting around 17 troops a turn exactly. Pinpoint on the nose, 17 troops. Um, and in order to block him, you have to be making more than 50 troops a turn to block him per turn, right? Because he's going to get 17. Smack it, smack it, smack it. Three turns in a row. Smack it, smacks the troops stack that's been high Z. And you have to keep replenishing it. So, in all in all, Green's situation is bad for late game because once the troops, uh, troop trades get above 45, which is after the second trade in, he will be blocked. He will be. So in order for Carter to survive, he needs to put everything off cap and that's risking his life, right? So, and in this situation, there is no reason in any neighborhood of the world why yellow should be holding this, but there's no reason why I should be taking it either, but I have to remove. So what I will do even though, oh, I even see as blue's cap is very weak right now. Notice that. I expect blue to break this, but I cannot let yellow break or hold it because he's already on the other side of the map. This makes no sense for yellow to hold. Usually, I would never, I wouldn't go bad neighbor on people, but because he's on the other side of the map, it makes no sense for him to take it. 
He can break me back all he wants. Doesn't make sense. And I leave the seven there so that yellow can't just go pop, pop, break the bonuses. I'll be able to break one, but it won't matter. I would have, I would expect blue to break me here. I'm kind of surprised he's not. He's in a weak position. He can't afford to to have a weak cap like this. He should be taking the bonus immediately. Um, and because of that, now because he hasn't, uh, he probably dies very quickly, very very quickly here. Um, going back to the thing, Karis. I think you understand the question I'm asking. Sometimes I see someone take a cap next to where I would have wanted and end up losing three before. Wow, okay. Bruh. Yeah, when placing the kissing cap, you always have to be scared about your cap because the player before you trades first and can hit you early, earlier. So super cap stacking is very important. Yes, it's rarely a good choice except you kiss a bot cap. Kissing bot caps are okay because they won't smack you unless they're at least 80, I'd say. Is, is that right, Hakaris? About 80%? I want to say 80% to... If it's the only role it has, it will take a riskier role than normal. But it obviously depends on the type of bot that you are playing with. An expert bot is more predictable than it would be with a beginner or, or easy bot, right? Um, I do have... So the most... In, the, 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 the few things you want to be looking for, right? When you get into a Caps game, right? A few things you want to be looking for. Number one... Oh my god, Carter, you're so weak. Number one, few things you want to be looking for are my cap's kind of weak. You want to look at your position. Where are you on the where are you on the uh side of the board? What's your starting position? Once you know that, you can do what you need based off of that. Expect blue to break. Yep, makes sense. Where where are you based on that? And then figure out who's before you where and that decides where you're not going to put your cap at being in the last position has its advantages and its disadvantages the biggest disadvantage to being last in the turn order is placing your cap you're probably not going to get a good cap if you're last in turn order but the other uh, advantage of it is that you're going to get the biggest trade in most likely unless someone hard skips which is unlikely right um what am i thinking about so next things ne next things next to think about how many car blocking spots do you have for your capital that is a huge thing right we're looking at the very middle of the map we're looking at the red player all right he has how many territories connected to his cap let's see one two three four five that's five territories around his cap that's five cards he will he will always have of course in, except for because he's like, it's next to his cap. Unless someone stacks a hundred stacks around his cap, he's not. He's he's always going to get a card. But who's going to get hundred? Who's going to get like five hundred troops on freaking turn three, right? Exactly. So the only way to block him is to make sure he hits all the territories around his cap, and then you block the cap territories around those territories, right? That's how you block a capital. So I'm going to be wanting to cap uh to stack on Berlin, Bavaria, Vienna. Dinarides, Romania, Kiev, Kharkiv, and Estonia. Now, that's how many secondary territories you need to block just to block that one cap, right? Now, this gets more complicated in portals, right? When you have stable portals on, because if someone's caps on the portal, how are you going to block them? You have to block every single portal that's around the map. That's why portals for caps are bad, right? I think we all learned this in the World Championships of Season 1, uh, 2023. I think that was very fairly clear. White can already block green. Yes, exactly. White can already block green. That's why green's position is so bad. But if he got it done like immediately, he would have been fine, right? Well, yeah, I know. I know that, Karis. You're good. Uh, one thing I will uh, show you guys right now and uh, have you understand is this map that I have been given and blessed with by Hakaris. He created this a while back. Um... Let me pull it up. I have it right here. Sorry, one second. Here we go. So this is something to really take a look at right now. I'm going to pull it up like this. So if you want to take a picture, you can. 
Actually, I'll make it easier for you guys. I don't know why it looks like that. Okay. Oh, it still looks like that regardless. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, if you can see around the map, this, what the colors mean is uh, red means only one connected territory. Uh, what orange means is there are only two to connected territories, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the only, there's only two on the map that have the eight, and that is the, uh, Western Sahara two right here. And then the Harkev in the top, right? Those are the best territories on the map in terms of how many territories they connect to. This is the kind of territories you want to be looking for. The only problem with bottom left is that you could still, uh, three point block on Andalusia sardinia or jajel right here and also Surti. so it kind of makes this one a kind of dull but when you look at this one it's a five point block on uh prussia uh hungary romania uh south russia and raskela over here so it's a five point block on this one on in the middle it becomes more technical when you're looking at uh blocking caps okay we got a set hungary what are we looking at feeling blue is not feasible Okay, yeet. I like to take a card and pass and let everyone else do the job for me because I'm just that kind of guy. I'm trying to explain things, so I'm trying to like not like get into the gameplay as much. I'm just kind of show you what's going on right now and what why cap some cap picks are better than others. So get back to it here. As you can see around the map, uh, based on these can change based on blizzards. If you play without blizzards, you can always look at this map. It's always accurate. Uh, Looking around the map, why is there numbers on the territories? So, the let's just start with the easiest understanding right here. As you can see right here, this has a four, and it's connected to one territory. Why does it have a four on it? Well, it, it, this is also including the secondary territories. So, it's including the one that's touching two, and the other three around it, if that makes sense. So, in order to block this one territory, if someone puts a cap on it, it's only a three point block on these three territories, right? So if someone caps there and they attack out, now they block their cap. You just don't open that, you surround it with tens, it's blocked, done, right? That's as easy as it can be. That makes you understand what you're looking at for when you're trying to find a cap. So if I cap right here on Burgundy, they have to block me on certain, the secondary territories all around. There's 14 secondaries, right? Or, and primaries, it's including primaries. So you got one, two, or it's including even up here into Mercia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen, as you can see. It doesn't include the territory itself. That's something to remember. Okay. And don't forget to screenshot that if you want to keep that for yourself. It's a very important map. I think that everyone in the risk community is going to want to have. Sorry if I worded that weird, but thank you for the information. That helped a lot. No problem. We are here for everybody in the community. All right. All right taking a card and pass. Nice. Then why don't you post it in your Discord? It's in the Discord, uh, just not formally. It's just in the general chat hanging around. Did you not screaming in a caps game? That's a first because I'm trying to explain why certain cap picks are more important than the others. Uh, like, for instance, let's just pick a random cap again. Let's choose uh, Prussia, okay? In order to cap block Prussia, what do we need to do? We need to block the secondary territories around it, like I've said before. So the secondary territories, uh, if you want to make it easier on yourself, you don't need to really block a territory like... Uh, this netherlands right here you can block on you can use B burgundy as that secondary instead instead of including these three right or these two and you can also block here on denmark but you can pull it down that's fine you could also block you have to block on let's just go around i'll, I'll point you out what what you do need you need denmark burgundy alps venice treste dinarides romania Kiev. this is harkiv you can't do Estonia and uh, Lievia, but you can do 
uh i believe this is i can look at it the map it's there's already a cap on it right now st petersburg frick i almost had it <laughs> okay but these are important to know because blocking a cap like this caliber is going to be very difficult probably one of the best capped spots on the map but that's why i like i like it a lot prussia probably one of the best on an open map sometimes harkev could be the best but because of the five point block it kind of makes it difficult in the late game um that's why prussia is usually the best cap on the map um sometimes hungary sometimes romania sometimes vienna sometimes burgundy you know they're all really good all around here you want to look at for the purple you want to look for the blue anything that's above uh uh teal really is the best and also another thing to understand is you never ever put a cap inside of a bonus you always want it to border another bonus why is that because if you take your bonus that you're in like like let's say i put it in rome or no a better example what would be a better example moscow let's say i put my cap in moscow then i when i take this bonus my cap is now blocked i can't I'll have it ready for whenever i need to in the late game right you want to make sure you're opened always want your cap opened at all times all the stinking time okay or Rhine. Yes, Rhine's a good example of that because Denmark is blocked. Netherlands, Bolivia, Berlin, Prussia. P Berlin is also another uh, example. Um, Mercia is another example. You're surrounded by Scotland, Ireland, and London. Another example, Rheim, Sunsvale. Another example, top left, Iceland. Another example, Morocco. Here, 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 here. Another example, these three, or these four right there. Um, another example, Anakara. And 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 Kara to Ezram to Jordan, Arab, Lebanon, you know, Laban. You know, then Heisey, you know, it connects to Greece. You don't want Surti or Tobruk, but Surti can sometimes be okay. Uh there's certain situations for that. Uh even Petro Zavak. I don't I don't know, dude. You could I don't know how to pronounce it. Krasendor, you know, those are all examples of bad caps. You always need to if you have a cap that is uh touching a touching a border it is going to be a good cap you want it to touch more borders the more borders borders that you have it touching the better the cap is uh so that is uh one of the bi biggest important things but the most important thing is making sure that that cap is not blockable boners you know what brutalisk you can shut the frick up man <laughs> oh my gosh uh, use your name, right? of course. Moscow, Moscow, Moscow. Oh my goodness, all of you, you're enjoying it too much. Anyways, I hope you guys understand that. I'm gonna play out the rest of this game and then explain more. I'll probably be cutting some stuff out, so it's all good. Um, we're here. Uh, big thing. Make sure you're always trading in all three and not the set of individuals you want to do this this on progressive only you want to do this it, when you're in playing in fixed you always use the big set regardless of your cards even if you have the joker you use the joker unless there is a way to you with unless there is a way to not use the joker and still get the plus and still get the 10 set right you always use the big set and fixed you always use the same cards in progressive there is no reason you should ever not use the big set in fixed okay, i'm gonna break blue for you man sometimes i hold on three to save a joker but um no joker you shouldn't even be setting um if you're in fixed, you should never save this. You should never save the Joker. It doesn't matter. It truly does not matter to save the Joker unless you don't need to set, but it's better to set. Never, never not set in fixed. In progressive, you always wait till five. Always wait till five unless you have to set. 
always wait till five unless you have to set. Yeah, a joker is not as important as you think it is in fixed. It is pretty much the it's 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 not as big of a deal as if people make it out to be. Um it's just important that you get your troops. That's what's most important. You can't play the game without your troops, right? It's better to set in as soon as possible in fixed if you have the big set. If you don't have the big set, don't set it. Simple as that, right? Okay, green has just Fed blue with him being before him that even helps out him even more because now red could easily take the kill on blue no doubt he's got the 35 stack he's got his 85 it's easy done he's dead you milk the cards for the most value yeah exactly if you guys have any questions please i'll, I'll probably say this at the end but if you guys have any questions about what i'm talking about you have any issues that you might see happen please ask me in the comments there's no there's no reason why you don't you don't you shouldn't do that because i i can answer about everything you you need to know gonna smack the 33 he's slidering 69 dude oh me and carter with the synced in that is great oh man <laughs> see what carter did is he smacked blue Eating blue so that he gets another placement up because he knows he's not in the best position right now. I can understand what Carter did because he knows he's just not gonna. He also fed. So it looks like yellow's gonna get the kill. Oh shoot. Yellow's gonna go from behind. Why? It doesn't block his 78 cap in the top right. Thank you, Hakaris. Thank you for explaining to people that I can confirm help people out who are not yet Grandmasters. <laughs> oh my God. Accidentally clicked intern, I guess. Oh, it's okay, Burlesque. We all make mistakes. So now you're seeing 180 troops for... Wait, the, we got Nuke here. I should probably go through the players real quick, but... Uh, I'm here with uh, a lot of troops. I'm going to break red. He doesn't need that. Hashtag JV, JJ Novice. You got that right, Cool Tim. You got that freaking right. So what Carter's going to do is he's going to steal that 38 cap right now. He needs that cap to win the game or to even have a chance. I think another thing here was uh, probably moving some troops over to it now, but I think that cap is strong enough that he will most likely be okay, but he's going to need more troops. He's a bit slow on the lower side. He also just set in early and is still kind of weak after all that. I'm still stronger than him and, and I have a set. I have a set over him on that. Also, he kind of break. He broke a little bit of people. Still, still containing that friendship with white was, was really good for him. Um, usually in this situation, you'll see the white player go down and try to remove that pocket as soon as possible because, of, you know, they just want it so badly. It's more of a noob move in the early game to go for it so quickly. Honestly, if you're in this situation where Greece is, you just kind of want to contain yourself. Hope you hold a bonus, you know. Uh, if you don't get a bonus, you're kind of in a bad position. But if you keep waiting for the late game, in white's position, he will be blocking green, right? But since Green's got this extra cap, he won't die first. Green will be just fine. But he's kind of weak right now. That's the only thing that is hurting Green. Okay. I'm gonna take it. Why the frick not? Yes. I'm playing in another lobby and the bot just hit me and I fortified into me. Oh boy, that sucks, man. With the bot play, when you get bots in here, it's all about finding the right spot to trade cards with the bot and still not having it stack against you. You want the bot to stack against the enemy players while getting free cards. Uh, there are certain areas around the map you can get easy cards. Depends on the blizzards, depends on where the caps are. Because the bots will go crazy over caps, over certain uh, bonuses. You kind of want to be inside of a bonus rather than uh, be outside of one. Uh, because the bots are kind of weird on the borders of bonuses. The best thing you can do is not hold a bonus. But, uh, for example, you put your stack in Arabia 
you take Iraq, Jordan, and Me Mecca Medina every turn, while the bot has like an eight stack taking the uh, taking the territories every turn. As long as you're surrounding your cap with your ones, the bot won't stack next to you with a big giant set unless it wants the bonus really bad. Then you need to make sure you're taking a little bit more territories than just the four. You probably want to take more like into Ezra and Georgia, Gezentepe, Lebanon, Lebanon, and Israel. Just like taking all of it so it doesn't overstack just because it wants the bonus, right? This is like in the end game with a bot, automated bots. You know, people don't play with them that much, but it's important to understand them. Uh, what do we want to do? That's our 70. I would love to kill red. I would love to. But the reason why I'm not killing red right now is because sets are too low. Yes, five cards. I get it. But if I lose too many troops, it's basically over for me. Or I'll be weak after I'll be the fish, right? I just want to hit red. Better to do that. Be cautious of my surroundings. I don't... See, in my situation, I no longer care about holding a bonus. I, in this situation, because I'm so strong, I could care less about a bonus. And I could care more about wanting to have my cap open. So as soon as someone breaks my bonus, I do not take it back. I leave it open. It's more important to have that, uh, that cap open rather than closed and having that bonus every turn. If, if I attack Johnny right now and break his bonus, he'll never take Dynarads back because I will never be open to him as long as no one hits the territories next to my cap. Easily blocking me. Okay. What else can we talk about? What else do you guys want to know? Chat, you're here. What you gain from hiding... What you gain from holding Joker and Fix, discuss, disguising a play, waiting for a bigger trade, you more than lose, you you more than lose from looking at like a better kill. What? You it's it's better waiting for a bigger. What? I'm trying to understand what Hornet has said there. I think it's important. I understand people want to disguise the plays. Maybe you have a five. Maybe you waited till five with your Joker. That's fine. If you're strong enough, it, it, if you're in a stalemate type situation and you're strong enough that you know no one can kill you on the board, uh, yeah, sure. Keeping your Joker is fine. All right. It's, it's good. You can keep your Joker. But if it comes down to, to the five uh, cards and you have to use your Joker to get the big set versus getting the uh, eight set or six set to not use the Joker, you still use the Joker because it's about troop count more than it is about the uh, Joker, holding the Joker. Because the Joker isn't that amazing. As much as people like to say, it's not as amazing as it looks, all right? I think the most important thing is uh, having those troop counts and fixed. Now, there are certain situations where I say it's okay, and that is when you have the eight set with the artillery and the plus two, but you do not have the plus two with the 10 set because it's still 10 troops. That is a reasonable play. You're still getting the same amount of troops. It's worth it to not use the Joker. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about hitting that cap. <laughs> I don't know why. I kind of just want to, but no, it's not the right play. Don't even need to set on four. We kind of just need to let things go. Need to let things go. Don't need to make anything ridiculous plays. No ridiculous plays. Yeah, the plus two thing. I'm glad you touched on that. No problem, dude. The plus two, uh, it that only happens when you have the territory of the card that you have. It's pretty simple to understand. Not removing yellow there. Where? Oh, there. Mm. He can't go north. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. No 
Okay. I sometimes try to extract the value. Yes, you want the plus two. It makes sense. When hitting, oh, when hitting capitals. Um, when you should be hitting capitals versus when I shouldn't. Uh, when you have at least two point seven times, it the safe the safest play to hold and keep a cap is when you have two point seven times the cap value. So basically, what I have right here, it would hit that cap. I could hit that cap with a safe amount of troops. And plus I have a set. So, I mean, I have, I would take the cap and I'd be able to hold it with confidence. The only thing is, is I'm not killing him. I would only really take a cap if I really knew I was going to kill him. I had no reason to go after something like that. It's not worth it. JJ, who is playing the best? Um, well, at the moment, you're in probably the worst position, Johnny, because your cap is like basically surrounded. There's only one way out. I mean, same for me. It's only one way out, but only one territory hit and it's open. Same, I guess same for you, but like in this situation, uh, Carter is in the best situation as long as he holds that cap in Bavaria. Poland is probably never going to get blocked just because I'm next to him. He's see when you're one territory away from another cap, the chances of you getting blocked are greater. But when you are next to someone like red who is basically next to everyone as you can see he's basically in the center of all he's the least to get, he's least likely to get blocked he's in the best scenario people like to pick on the people with more uh players like to pick on the people with more caps just because they it's like two out of six they're the leader in the game but it's not necessary okay in this situation i could be taking that cap from carter but I want someone else to make the move because I'm I'm kind of the guy who likes to sit back most of the time unless I see an opportunity that is going to benefit me and keep the game moving forward smoothly without people taking a chance at coming back and hitting me just because I just smashed someone. You know? RPO's question. Let's go back up. RPO's question. First of all, thank you for the whole explanation. What a great JJ lesson. No problem. I've had so many people come up to me and ask me about it. So it was about time I did so. Which setting do I have to use to move large numbers of units? For example, in the end game, when there are several thousands, thousand units on the map. Um, What setting do you have to use to move a large number of units? For example, okay um the only setting that matters is playing progressive that's the one where you're going to be moving a lot of troops you'll rarely ever see a, a fixed game get above the uh, troop count for you to even have to do that the possibility of that happening is so low it's ridiculous yes yeah, so opateo this is the same game yep I see no reason for uh, a scroller to be necessary and fixed. I hope that's pretty clear. I mean, yeah, for game setting, there is no game setting that will change the fact that you can scroll. If that's what you're asking, there's no setting in the game that's going to help you get scrolling easier. Oh, about the mouse? You just... I mean, you don't... I don't need the mouse. I don't need it. I can still... I can still uh, scroll maybe up to 2,500 troops maximum. If I really pushed myself to do it, if I really had to, I'd probably get up to 2,500 on a, on a drag and pull just by dragging and pulling across the uh, the scroller. Still possible. I've seen some... I've seen some people do it, especially uh, others. And then... Uh, my scroll wheel is just it's convenient for me you're rarely ever going to need a scroll wheel most people like i'm telling all of you even mobile players you don't need a scroll wheel you can still get up to 2000 trips on on just spinning you can do it people can do it it's more recommended to do it in the fortified stage because it's hard to do it's hard to do dragon pull when you're in attack mode it's better to do it in the in the fortified phase because it gives you more uh flexibility for some reason I can show you here in a second. 
Um, so if I'm doing here, you see, I can just do this. Drag and pull. As you can see right now. See how fast I'm doing it? Probably up to 100 every 5 seconds. As you can see right now. But like, it's way better to do it in Fortify. Because it, it goes way quicker. Wait, 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 wait. It depends on the way you do it. Wait. Am I, am I going insane right now? I feel like they changed the UI. Or they, they made the UI the same again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think they made the UI the same. Because it used to be the big screen equals big dragging. Is it is it because of big screen, Akaris? Is it really? I feel like I just I just threw that on myself there. <laughs> Cause I think it's different. I think it might have changed. They might have changed the UI from attacking to fortify phase to make it the same. I don't know. I think shoot. Big screen does mean big dragging. I can see that, Hakaris. I can see that. Um, so now what it's forcing... What is he trying to do? The harder you press, the faster it scrolls. Um, uh, if you press longer and let go at the right time, you're, you're, you're getting the right scrolls in. Yeah. Dragon? Where? Where is the dragon kilted? Dragon these nuts on your ah, Rick. Dude got me good. Oh, Rick, man. If you want to scroll very slow, you can use your arrow keys too. Uh, yes, you can use arrow arrow keys. Arrow keys are probably for corners. I'm not as experienced in the corner, the corner phenomenon. Hey, let me let me show you. Like this, like that. But when I when I go like this, like that, like that, and I go, I mean that's I'm not as good at it as other people are, but I use foot pedals to scroll. How did you know, Taco? Who told you that? <laughs> Dude, imagine beating Risk with a wheel. <laughs> like, like freaking who who beat Minecraft with a wheel? Someone beat Minecraft with a wheel. Can you imagine that? When is a good time. When is it good to keep troops off cap when you're in the one v one? You don't want to keep troops off cap when you're when you're not in the one v one. Uh, you the only other reason you keep troops off cap you wouldn't want to keep that much off cap, but it's to have an exterior so people unlock your cap but this is more of something that you're not going to see when you're holding bonuses people are too afraid to break you um they're too afraid to break you because you're so strong the only person who would actually have reason to break me is going to be carter because what if he has to go through to hit white or yellow makes sense what if he needs to go hit white block through romania he might go through yellow instead maybe he wants to be friends with me the whole time not breaking my bonus giving reasoning for you but the arrow key split is fast for corner splits, yes. So if I'm going if I'm going and playing on a map like Arkinos where there's like a six split or uh even Supermax where there's a bunch of corners, you go in you go into the top left bonus with the plus seven, you go into there, you have a fifty stack, you're hitting all the corners, pushing arrow key, click, arrow key, enter, enter, enter key. You know, it's like I'm not that good at that. I need to practice on it. <laughs> so all right. As you can see here, this is how fast I do it with the scroller. But when I do this, you can still fortify a pretty good amount if you're using your dragon pole. I just went through the scroll wheel like twice and that's like a thousand troops and I haven't even gone through half my turn, right? So like that. Try try practicing when you're on like pass and play. That can help you. You know, I know it's kind of cliche, hey, why do I have to practice for this? But 
you know, could help you. People don't want to practice for something that shouldn't be like that, right? I practice pulling off all the time. Thank you, Birdalisk. We all needed to hear that. There are lots of reasons. Protect a bonus. Card blocking, which you can not do in a 1v1. Hiding troops and fog. Yes, there you can do that, yes, but you know, it's when you're you don't always need to protect your bonuses. I feel like that's something that's overlooked at is protecting bonuses. It's not the number one thing you want to be looking for. I think it's more important that you're looking at uh leaving your cap open and have, having an exterior. That's probably the most important thing. In the earlier game, I can understand protecting bonuses, but you're risking those troops that could be on capital protecting you as a whole. The more troops you have off cap, the more vulnerable you are, if that makes sense. Yeah, in general, pass and play mode is basically your sandbox, but the only problem is that you it's technically not a sandbox because you can't just automatically place a thousand troops. Actually, I'm just thinking of zombies, not everyone and not everything else. Solo for zombies, but pass and play for most other things. Zombies. I love zombies. If they the bug didn't if the glitch they had going on right now wasn't going on, I would be playing a lot more zombies. I just don't play zombies on ranked because you can get infected and that's just it's not reasonable for a ranked if you're trying to rank up. Okay. Any more questions? I'm sure I missed a lot in the top. Question. W1 Pro 9. Missed that. It was like minutes ago. Question. Now Pete is posting more EU advanced videos on YouTube and he plays these settings in a more attacking snowball style. Have you noticed a change in style of play recently? Like how he influenced World on Prague? No. Has it changed? Nope. Has not changed at all. It's all the same. People have been acting like this a lot. I feel like the only thing that could change is people being more friendlier about bonuses that's it if pete pete was going to influence that that's the only thing i could see the way the way pete plays that's not how you should be playing you advanced you shouldn't be going snowballing that or that that shouldn't be the way the game is played if you ever see me snowball i am lucky as frick right that's that's not common snowballing is not common on you advanced for some players it is but that's because uh you know you might be playing with some new new i i'm only saying this because i play with i play with higher level players i mean it's not common for me i should say that it's not common for me <laughs> i should rephrase that and say it like that okay as you can see i got three dudes send dudes send dudes i'm gonna be the guy so if you if if the seasons were longer then you'd play more zombies if this no if the seasons were longer um i'd i'd be grinding up more because i'd have more time for it and i have a, i would have a higher likelihood of getting up there because not it seems like what i'm seeing in the later season is people can't tend to keep their rank that high unless they stop playing so i know if i just keep playing on average i'll make it to number one in the long in the long run so honestly it's better to have longer seasons for me but with with because the games are so freaking long i can't really make it the longer the season the worse the zombies are they they are fine for low gm but in too inconsistent for high range longer season would require higher consistency exactly that's why i play ranked caps because my consistency on a caps map is greater than higher than 90 percent at least on uh expert or i'd even say not i'd say intermediate to grandmaster is like i'd say novice to grandmaster is probably like a 80 percent likelihood of me winning expert to grandmaster is probably 90 percent because i have those players tend to be more uh of a greater skill level than the novices the novices are too noob to understand what they need to do and it, it turns it turns into usually a snowball from the from the novice grandmaster games that's why they're tend they tend to be a lot 
a lot uh, faster. But obviously, this is a all Grandmaster game, and this is what it what you should see in an all Grandmaster game. I it's it's kind of interesting to see a player dead, but that's what happens when you're playing with someone who doesn't take a bonus in the very center of the map. Seeing how far I can go with zombies, we'll see. I don't know. Eighty-two points kind of seems pretty hard to stop to top, dude. Um, let's go back. If we're talking about eighty-two thousand points, that's not really realistic for FFA, um, unless you have a a win rate of ninety-nine percent. It's not possible. I don't even have a win rate like that. I I don't even have a win rate like that. You would need 99% win rate to that for that to happen. It's kind of ridiculous. That's like a 1v1 win rate. I think 1v1 win rates are the only ones that can really get that high. That's even high. Honestly, I'd, I'd actually have to argue that that um that win rate was even higher than what Zeriki had back in the day at 7.8 million. It's the same value as 78,000 from back in the day because they just took off two zeros. You guys didn't know that. Basically the same values. They just took off two zeros from the score of ranks. Literally, they used to call them skill points and they just had them at, in the millions. And around 4 million was Grandmaster, I'd say. I forget, I think. Yeah, 4 million. And top 100, top 100 was 5 million. Top 30 was 6 million. And then top 10 was 7 million and up. And Zeraki was around 7.8 million skill points. But when they were resetting the leaderboards, changing some stuff, they made uh, skill points at the, it, just in the thousands, the tens of thousands instead. So getting there would be like trying to get to uh, 8 million. This is fine. This is fine. Which is not possible, I think at least right now there's not a consistent enough setting that has been seen that can get you to that point right now no no nuke it was seven point something million was it 2.6 for the grandmaster is that what you're talking about uh... yeah i don't think it's been he's been there for about a couple days now so yeah i can understand but prog caps is the easiest to reach gm yes of course i decayed to sixteen thousand, got 30 to thirty thousand, lost two games fifth place and then got bugged so i'm showing sixteen thousand again bruh i dropped to sixteen point five thousand this season when playing fun settings, somehow it got to reset to 26k again. Riedel, you hacker. <laughs> Not really, I'm joking. Any setting with friends? Yes. Last season, I got to 30, got bored, did a random settings generator, fully dropped to 25, then let it decay to 16,000 on reset. Oof, that sucks, Aries. Master, yes. Or two, it was 2.6 million back in the day. Okay. Oh, so that that makes yeah, that makes sense because that's 26,000 now. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Nuke. Number one was 7.8 million. Yep, like I said. Mm hmm. Yep. But there were like three or four people sitting out. It was actually seven. And UL was was moving up. Uh, we had about three people sitting around 7 million to 7.1 million. They were at 10th, 9th, and 8th. And No, no, no. 8th place to 1st place was right at the same amount of skill points. They were all right there at the same amount. I posted examples of the zombie pathic generator in the Discord. I mentioned it yesterday. Generates images with optimal blizzards. Oh, optional blizzards. Okay. Wow. Kind of cool. Honestly, I think that you don't even need the blizzards to do it, uh, Ares. I think that blizzards are... They don't need to be in it to prove what the pathing is. 
Uh, I think you've, have you seen the ones in the past from before how they've made those? This is mainly about caps, guys. Like, we're, we're steering off topic. We can talk about that stuff later. This is progressive capitals. Why you should choose this cap on your advanced caps. Users have blizzards and it's for the end user. Yeah, but they can figure that out themselves, I feel. Like, because... You know, I haven't seen them, not with the boots. Okay. It's just proving you have a primary, you have a secondary, you have a tri uh a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, even up to seven or eight, if there's that many territories you can attack. Yeah. They could be pretty dumb. Man, if they can't read a map, that's on them. Oh shoot. I think you might have gotten the bug. I guess we played too long to see ourselves. Oh shoot. We found ourselves as the villains. <laughs> I can still pick, pick C to to look at this. Uh, this still can do this. Still can do this. Let's look at territories, but I can't place because this guy chose. Yep, there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there's a there's a glitch going on right now. Uh, with all of risk servers right now so there's, there's issues with people getting uh, staying in the game after someone glitching out like yellow just did so bear with me here uh thank you so much for being in watching this video if you uh enjoyed please subscribe if you want to see more more stuff on other settings in the future uh this is mainly on the europe advanced meta settings i hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you guys later. Peace! Okay. I can't do anything. Bro, I can't do anything. Ugh. Dude, I can't even move my screen. I can't even push escape. I can push S and do look at the stats. I can push C and look at the uh, the uh this. I can push T. Look at the territory uh cards I have. But I can't even push escape to leave the game. What is that? Can I push enter? P Nope, I can't. I can't push anything, guys. So, there you go. That's what's wrong with the glitch. At least you can see the freaking thing. Um, I guess you guys... <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Frick. Ugh. This is why KPO is Legends are postponed. Yep, makes sense. I, I completely agree on that. Guilted. It's so annoying, dude. I actually lost. I was playing a freaking Master Plus game. And I... I bought it out during that faster plus game. Well, F4 and restart the game. It worked for me. Mega, Mega Mass, it did not work. Shut the frick up. I'm going to exit out of the game. And we'll try and see if it works. It doesn't... It seems not to work every time. It leaves you with the waiting for a host every time. So, here we go. Deja vu. You must be in the Matrix. Keep calm and play... Keep, keep calm and carry on playing. Let's hope that this rejoins, but it usually glitches. You'll see why. Does this, and then leaves you on this again. And then eventually it starts doing something, right? And if push escape to leave this, I have to exit out of the game again for a second time. Showing you how that glitch works. That is all it does. You can't go any further than that. And then when you come back in the game, there's no joining the game again. It won't let you again. Yeah, I'll join the game again. I'll come back into the game. Oh, wow. This is, this is the first time. I, I'm going to point out right now. This is the first time I've actually been offered to join it again for a second time coming back into the game. 
So I'm going to click it. I've never seen this happen before. Here we go. Does it work this time? I'm going to assume no. It does that again. Okay. This is the second time. I, I honestly, I've never seen it happen a second time for me. It's usually just not let me back in again. Okay. So I still can't do anything. Game push escape. I have to exit out of the game manually. Okay. We're going to try it again. I've, I've never, I've never had that happen. That's the first time I've done. I've had to deal with that three times and I've never, it's done for a third time. Okay. It shouldn't let me do this again. If I, if I click the check mark uh, for a third time or a fourth time, it shouldn't let me do it. Okay. Same thing happened again. Okay. We leave again. I'm pretty sure the third, fourth time, it shouldn't even ask it. Shouldn't even ask it on the fourth time. Yes, I'm right. Because you can't join a you can't join back to your game after you've tried to join three times and it recognized that. That was my third time already. This will be my fourth time, so it won't let it do that. So there you go. That's how the glitch works. Once you're out of the game like that, you're done. You get the waiting for host glitch, it's over. You're done. You can watch the rest of the game until you die. And I don't know what happens once you die. That's one thing I haven't checked out before. Sorry, I'll stay off Twitch. Nuke, it wasn't even your fault. It just, I mean, it technically was because, you know, most players tend to get the glitch off of that, but there's some games where I don't get the glitch off of that. So it's fine. The video isn't ruined, uh, Nuke. I'm still going to use it. I, I got all, I got to most of the topics. I think, I think all of them really. We just kind of like veered off track when we were talking about zombies. That's the only thing. Is the risk process still running? In my case, I stopped it via task manager, just saying. Uh, I can do that like that way, doing it a 